Texas Longhorns. The next three weeks will tell the story as far as Texas is concerned. Kansas State and Nebraska at home, sandwiched in between Oklahoma next Saturday in Dallas. This will define Mac Brown's season. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody. I'm Brent Musburger. A pleasure to be working with Brian Greasy's daddy over here this afternoon. <laughs> this is Bob. Bob, come on in here and tell me about the quarterback situation up in Kansas State. Adam Helm came back and rallied him. Is he the leader today? There's no Michael Bishop. I think that's the first thing everybody has to realize. Jonathan Beasley started the first three games of the year, played poorly in the first half. Adam Helm came on and won the game for him in the second half. He's a fifth-year senior, a walk-on, making his first start. He's nervous, but Bill Snyder said before the game he deserves the opportunity. No question about Major Applewhite in Texas. Hey, I like him a lot. Ricky Williams is gone. Seven other offensive starters. They haven't missed a beat. This is Major's team. He's uh, averaging nearly 300 yards per game passing. I think Major Applewhite is the best young quarterback in the nation. You know, Bob, one of the other passions besides football in Texas is golf. And last Sunday, one of the most dramatic moments in golf history. And there is our Ryder Cup captain, Ben Crenshaw, who will bring the football to the center of the field. An All-American golfer here in Austin in the early 70s, won a couple of NCAA championships, and he was one of the greatest collegiate golfers ever. So Captain Crenshaw comes to the center of the field to deliver the game ball. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. One of the greatest comebacks in any sports history. Last Sunday by the United States Ryder Cup team, and there's the man who predicted it the night before it all began. Known far and wide around here as Gentle Ben, still makes his home in Austin, Texas. A wonderful gentleman. We have quite an honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I've got, got you a ball mark for the rest of your career. Uh, oh, do you? How's that? How about that one there? That's a, that's a great ball. Yeah. Thank you, sir. <laughs> But they'll play this one with a football and not a golf ball. Texas, Kansas State, coming up. Okay. One of the aspects of today's game we haven't talked about is the performance of special teams, specifically that of punt returns. It could play a big role in today's outcome. One year ago in Manhattan, Kansas, K-State's ace David Allen spanked the Longhorns for 176 yards, including one run back for a touchdown. What about it, Coach, today? Do you kick to Allen, or do you try to avoid him? Well, Jack, we avoided him last year by kicking it to him, not tackling him. So he's one of the best. I think he looks like Johnny Rogers. He returned one last week against Iowa State. We've got to do a great job of neutralizing him today to have a chance to win. Good luck today, Coach. Thank you, Jack. Brent. Jack, thank you very much. So we'll see if they angle kick. Kick it away into the end zone on fourth and short. Go for it. Everything will unfold here today. Jamie Ream kicking it off for the Wildcats who won the toss and elected to defer. Jeremy Jones and Victor Ike back deep for the Horns. A little breeze behind Ream and he pounds this one out of the end zone. Our Chile starting lineup. The Texas offensive line, Roger Raisler from Round Rock, Texas, making his 29th consecutive start here today. Kwame Cavill, he is the deep ball threat as far as the Horns are concerned, leading the conference in receptions with 37 right now. Major Applewhite's featured running back is Hodges Mitchell. He's broken the 100-yard barrier in each of the last two games also. Ricky Brown will be the fullback operating with him. And the major brings the Horns offense up to the line of scrimmage at the 20 yard line. With three wideouts, he drops a flanker screen off to Hodges Mitchell, who had gone for the tailback spot, and Travis Litton makes the stop for the defense. The Wildcat defense gave up a ton of yards in the first half against Iowa State. Then Darren Howard helped lead them back in that second half rally of theirs. Mark Semino, an outstanding linebacker who was a star for this team also last year. Two fine safeties. Lamar Chapman has the long interception return for the touchdown. Second down and 11 now for the Horns. So a beautiful. 
beautiful cut. First down, and Mitchell explodes to the 37-yard line. The junior from Dallas, Texas. Well, you mentioned Hodges Mitchell over 100 yards the last two ball games. Starts to his left side and then just cuts back. That's just great running and vision on his own. Wide receiver out there uh, needs to get after the block a little bit. So it gives the horns a uh, first down. And again, Mac Brown electing to stick with three wide receivers as Apple White with a little bit of a change up. Straight back, has time, incomplete. Montreal Flowers, the intended receiver. Now let's take a look at our Dell game solutions, Mr. Greasy. Well, for Texas on offense, they need to protect their franchise. They've got four new new offensive linemen in there. And then use the pass to set up the run. And that's uh, Kansas State wants to try and stop them. Defensively, Kansas State want to pressure Applewhite, obviously. And uh, defensively and special team-wise, make some big plays on special teams. David Allen has six punt returns for touchdowns. Deron Tyler checks into the defensive backfield as the Wildcats under Coach Bill Snyder come up with a nickel defense on this second down and 10 after the incompletion. Hit on the release, and it's intercepted in center field. Picked up by Chapman again. And Lamar Chapman, one of the talented safeties we told you about as we ran through the lineups, brings it back to the 22-yard line where Kansas State has a chance to strike first. I want to just... Anytime you reverse and take your eyes off of the secondary, it's dangerous. Chapman had his eyes on it all the way, had the slant route. That's the second interception. He returned the first one for a touchdown, as you mentioned. That's just a nice play by Chapman. He's an experienced fifth-year senior in the secondary. They intercept a lot of balls back there. Adam Helm dashes the offense to the line of scrimmage. The play already called. Snyder scripts his first dozen plays. Back comes Helm, fires too low, and knocked down by Cedric Woodard as we check in on the Chili's starting lineup for Kansas State. Damian McIntosh played a lot of defensive tackle a year ago, switched over to offense. Quincy Morgan, he's been the leading receiver, somewhat of a surprise because of the presence of Aaron Lockett in that lineup. And again, Adam Helm, the quarterback with Frank Murphy averaging eight yards a pop behind him at the running back spot. Keep an eye out on number three. Second down and 10 after the deflected pass. And here comes Murphy, tries to slip inside and can't as Irvis Hill smacks him. Bill Schneider was saying before the ball game that he wanted to ease Adam Helm into this game. He wanted to throw a short pass to get a completion. Well, that first attempt on the first play of the offensive uh, game plan was knocked down. Now Helm faces a third and 10 for Coach Snyder of the Wildcats. John Olazetich is the fullback. He's to the quarterback's right. Helm didn't like what he saw. He'll call a timeout. And we'll take a break in Austin. I'm Steve Kirby. These are my mountains. I test emissions for Ford Motor Company. We're up here in the Rockies testing Ford, Lincoln, and Mercury sport utility vehicles. We're really concerned about the environment. Every SUV we sell this year is going to be low emissions. These vehicles average 35% less smog forming emissions than the government requires. 35%. That's really amazing. The government doesn't make us do this. We're doing this for my mountains. Better ideas driven by you. That's what I call high quality H2O. Now, the Water Boy is yours to own for the first time. You can do it! Plus, you can enter to win a trip to the Nokia Sugar Bowl in New Orleans to see the BCS National Championship game as an honorary Water Boy. Oh! I think that's sexy. Grab your copy of The Water Boy. Take it home on video and DVD and enter today. You know, I wonder if you can fix that truck again. E-tailers like Amazon.com choose Priority Mail. Shouldn't you?
Some people have shrinks. Some people have their garage. I'm telling you, Michigan, Michigan State. We're at North. But I told these guys we'd take them to Miami, Florida State. Texas defensive coordinator Carl Reese. Listen to him. Kansas State loves to spread the, the field with three wides. And in doing that, either run or throw the football. We want to bring an outside linebacker to add pressure, make this man take in man to man. And the key to this, we can bring it in underneath and take care of gap control. And we think that's the key to winning the football game. Point to make here with Reese. He's extremely aggressive. They show a slot man to the right. Murphy, an excellent receiver, is lined up a tailback on this third and ten. Murphy gives him that third wide threat. Helm rolls in that direction. Fires and got it right at the mark. I believe he got a first down, but let's see if they move the chains. Very close. Aaron Luck at the receiver. He's got it. Well, we got just what Carl Reese was describing. The outside linebacker, go ahead, go ahead and run it. The linebacker at the top of the screen does blitz. The defensive end comes inside. Everything was set up. They just picked it up and completed the pass. Now Murphy goes outside, a little bit confused. He is lined up now as a wide out. Lazatic, the only back. He gets the call, busts up the middle, and you might remember this name, Lazatic. His father, Pete Lazatic, was one of the famed Thunder Chickens from Coach John Ralston now at Stanford Way and later played for Dick Vermeil with the Philadelphia Eagles. Missed last week because of an injury, and Jono is back in at fullback. The reason he's at Kansas State is because of Vermeil. Lazatic was at Oregon State. When Dennis Second Erickson down, showed up, they went one back. Lazatic's his father called Vermeil and said, where can they use a fullback? He suggested Manhattan, Kansas. And the rest, as they say, is history. Leads the way now for Murphy. Murphy cuts inside and slashes to the three-yard line with Everett Rawls bringing him down. Now Murphy's got tremendous speed to stretch the defense to the sideline and then find a gap. Anybody offensively, just stay with your defensive man. And then he has the speed and quickness to get up and pick up some yardage. Third down and a yard for Snyder's Wildcats. Mac Brown looking on from the near sideline. Left hash. Murphy stoned at the five yard line. Thrown back for a loss of a couple of yards on the play. Lee Jackson, the safety, comes up hard along with Sean Rogers. Hit at number 23, Jackson comes from the left side of the defensive formation. They go kick a field goal, or are they going to go for it? No, they'll go for a field goal here. They've got fourth down as a result of losing a pair of yards on it. And Jamie Ream will attempt a 22-yarder here to put K-State on the board after the interception. A big angle here, but a good-looking kick. And Kansas State strikes first after the apple white interception where he threw over the middle and Lamar Chapman picked his pocket to set up the game's first score a ream field goal Wildcats lead it time out. Long ago, an inventor came up with the assembly line, allowing a few people to make a lot of something. It was the model for efficiency. At Chili's, we pride ourselves for our inefficiency because we make each of the big mouth burgers by hand, grilled one at a time by a person. And when you taste for yourself how good they are, you'll appreciate all the time we've wasted. Chili's fresh grilled big mouth burgers, monuments of inefficiency. We build walls with our everyday routines and our cram it all in schedules. Walls that make a nasty habit of separating us from our dreams. But what if there were no walls? What if there was a way to go anywhere? 
and do anything. There is a way. But for this kind of journey, you're going to need an outfitter. Someone to equip you with the kind of gear that can get you to your dreams. Ford is your outfitter. Offering you the most far-reaching sport utilities on Earth. Climb in and watch the walls come tumbling down. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. Kansas State turns an interception into a field goal here with 10 20 to go in the first quarter and now Texas to handle the ball again with Ream kicking it off for the Wildcats. Jones and Ike back deep. Jeremy Jones to bring it out for the Horns at the 19-yard line. And uh, John Saunders, what about the Wolverines? Pretty impressive today again, huh, partner? Friend, here in the Burger King update, impressive indeed. Michigan last week stopped Ron Dane, and today they took it out on Drew Brees. He'd been sacked only once this season, got sacked twice today, picked off here by Larry Foote. Michigan rolls, and keep in mind that Michigan, right now in the driver's seat, remaining unbeaten. Purdue, their 10-game winning streak comes to an end. Nebraska, are they running well again? 38-7, to they lead Okie State. Right. All right, John, here it is first down for the Horns, and they use the fullback, Ricky Brown, I think a point to make. Bob, as far as Purdue is concerned, your alma mater doesn't get any easier for him to go to Ohio State next week. Yeah, and take it easy on those quarterbacks from Purdue. You know, you got a couple of hanging around these uh, press box. Major Applewhite, 139 straight passes without an interception until he threw that ball and picked off by Chapman. Ten touchdowns this year, only two picks off now. The other interception he had this year was a Hail Mary at the end of the, the uh, NC State game. Second down and ten for the Horns. Mitchell, nothing doing. His favorite attack spot and short of the 20-yard line. Bob, let's take a look here at the matchup, and you check off what you like here, partner. Well, I like Major Applewhite right here. I, I, I got to go with him. The defenses, I think, are about equal. Special teams is big in favor of uh, Kansas State with David Allen. You know, if you want an intangible, check Texas. I think they still remember All right. a, that whipping they field. took last year. <laughs> Up there in uh, Manhattan, I mean, they were drilled. Third down and ten. Shotgun look from Applewhite. And the right tackle moved, so that'll cost the Longhorns five yards. He broke the snap count. Prior to the snap, full start on the offense, five-yard penalty. Still third down. Yep. <laughs> what do you mean, yep? <laughs> I, I thought you'd have some good line, some good uh, comment. Well, how about the fact that he can bury you with that yellow? How's that, partner? I'm waiting for you to ask me. Third down and 15. <laughs> K State bluff blitz. Applewhite in trouble. Fumble! K State's got it. At the nine-yard line, Chris Johnson pounced on the loose football. Knocked loose by Monty Beisel. So two turnovers, and K-State inside the 10-yard line this time. All right, Beisel, number 44, is just going to run around. Williams, number 63. Two turnovers, two possessions. Right here, just going to run around him. He's a quick, smaller, quick defensive end against a huge offensive lineman, 6'6", and 340 pounds of right tackle. Murphy, the running back for K-State. Three wideouts, four down linemen. And Murphy is eaten up at the 11 by DeAndre Lewis, the middle linebacker, the sophomore from Houston. Go back to that matchup. I saw the defensive end weighs 250. Williams, the offensive tackle, weighs 340. He gave away 90 pounds, but that's not what the matchup's about. It's speed and quickness, and that's what caused the fumble and the turnover. Quincy Morgan goes off to the left. 
George Williams to the right. And Murphy running in that direction. Lazatich blocking for him. And Murphy squeezes it out of bounds at the six-yard line. We haven't taken a, a look at this Texas D today. Casey Hampton, he has been a key performer. But I think Sean Rogers may have been their all-around best so far early in the season. DeAndre Lewis moving outside into the middle this year. The secondary lost Quentin Jammer, but Lee Jackson holding forth at strong safety and Greg Brown the free safety. A lot of injuries on that defense. In fact, four starters. Four guys that would be starting didn't start today. Brings up third and goal. Adam Helm with that option look. Going to keep it. Nothing doing. And again, the Texas defense is equal to the challenge. And here comes the field goal unit on the field. A conservative play calling by the offensive coordinator, Ron Hudson, but it's smart. Brett, you're on the road. You get a couple of great breaks. You're inside the opponent's 30-yard line on your first two possessions, but you've got a kid that has never started a game before in his life. He's an ex-walk-on. Make sure you get some points out of the drives. This is for 23 yards out, same angle that he hit the 22-yarder. Well, Kansas State with two field goals. That's the good news. The bad news is they've had two turnovers and haven't been able to score a touchdown. This time, they recover a fumble inside the 10. So Longhorn fans can take heart. They're holding them to field goals. Timeout. Out here, the stories unfold like a map. Stories written across the sky with the tip of an eagle's wing. Stories to fill a scrapbook you'd want to page through again and again. But first, you've got to go to where the stories live. You'll need an outfitter for the journey. Ford is your outfitter. With the most far-reaching sport utilities on Earth, created to take you where the stories begin and never end. Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. children find their life's passion. Your dreams change. So have we. Now Dean Witter and Morgan Stanley have joined to provide a world of investment advice on a personal level. The world will change. But at Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we will always measure success one investor at a time. This better be good, Captain. Let us feel in California, taken yesterday afternoon and this morning. So? Florida, tomato field, taken yesterday and today. Now we're tracking a bacon train. Sir, this is live. Chicken truck convoy. What does it all mean? Next week, Burger King solves this mystery in a big way. Burger King, have it your way. Dead people. 12 Monkeys, ABC Tonight. Defensive end Monty Beisel responsible for that field goal. The junior from Douglas, Kansas forces the fumble. And K-State leads it by six. Reem has the ball on the tee. And for the third time today, he kicks it off. This one will come out on the 20-yard line. An ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford Outfitters. No boundaries. Burger King, when you have it your way, it just tastes better. The Waterboy, Touchstone Home Video scores with outrageous bonus footage. And Morgan Stanley, Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. Well, uh, Mr. Greasy, a lot of trouble here for this Longhorn offense in the early going. Well, four new offensive starters in that offensive line, and they are huge. They average 6'5", 327, and the quickness of the defensive line is winning the line of scrimmage right now for Kansas State. Kansas State stacking the box against the major. They rush four, and he steps away from the pressure, takes off, makes it to the 24-yard line, and Mark Simino brings him down. Kansas State defensively wants the pressure, pressure, pressure. Get up on the outside receivers and go bump and run and get the rest of the guys stopping the run. There's Phil Bennett. Great defensive coordinator calling the defenses. He's been that way forever. Stop the run, force you to throw. Of course, Texas, they want to come out and throw the football, but 
So far, the Cats are winning the battle. Full back offset to the left. Play fake. Apple White drops it off. Caught. First down. Beautiful grab by Ricky Brown as he battles for the necessary yardage and finally forced out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Nice play. So we have seen this aggressive defense, and uh, we asked Major Applewhite if he prefers playing against a blitzing or a non-blitzing defense. Uh, I would like a team that blitzes a lot. And um, the reason is because when, when you're blitzing and, you're, and, you're, and you keep blitzing, uh, you're kind of hoping to make the big play, but you're also giving up the big play. Major, a lot of single coverage in the secondary. The problem is Kansas State's getting a lot of pressure on him with just the front four. Well, Kansas State decides to call a timeout. So that'll give us an opportunity to remind you about prime time football coming up, and you're going to see some pretty good wide receivers. The Raiders and Seattle Sunday night on ESPN. Tim Brown, he'll do his stuff. And then on Monday night, it's Buffalo in Miami. Eric Moles and Bob Greasy, I know you think Moles is the real deal. Well, down in Miami, they are uh, they are uh, thinking back and taking a look at the three games they played Buffalo last year, the one playoff in the two regular season. Eric Moles just killed them. So they're looking for Moles. Let's go down below to Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, those first two quick scores by Kansas State have left the coaches on the Longhorn sideline extremely upset, not with play execution, but with the fact that they feel the players, the offensive players, are not showing a lot of poise. Rather than talking about making adjustments, the last time they were up on the sidelines, they talked about showing composure. They said, you've got to be more composed. Then you won't make so many mistakes. All right, Jack, and here at Royal Memorial Stadium on a warm, somewhat breezy day, and the breeze blowing out of that far end here. Kansas State takes advantage of two Texas turnovers. They lead it 6 0. First down, Horns. Major Applewhite is back in the shotgun. Forced out of the pocket and on the run again. So Kansas State not letting him pull the trigger on the pass, but the major is able to beat their defense for a few yards and bring up second down and short. The two turnovers, the keys to the first quarter. Chapman, then the forced fumble by Bison. But again, the Horns stand tall down in that red zone, and K-State settles for two field goals. Second down and three. For Texas. They, they show safety blitz and they run against it. Out of his shoe and out of bounds at the first down marker. Well, they picked it up nicely. They picked up the blitz. They had a good play on. And you just can't run without a shoe on. I mean, you gotta have spikes on the bottom. I mean. I mean, some of these guys are pretty quick, but uh, when you lose your shoes, you got to slow down a little. Ball near midfield. Major Applewhite and the Horns with another first down. And the big play wide receiver, Kwame Cavill from Waco, Texas. Splits out to the left. But K-State is not giving Applewhite enough time to get the deep ball. At least they haven't so far. Here's the pocket. He wants Cavill. Here he is going deep this time. Got one on one. Got it. Down to the 15-yard line. They go the overland route that time over Dyshawn Carter for 37 yards. Applewhite had been involved in two turnovers, but he comes back and throws this ball very well. Cavill to the right side of the screen against Carter. A little stop and go. You can't throw this ball any better. Throw it to the outside. Look at all the room to the outside of the two men that he has to throw the football. That's that's just good good uh, patience and good uh, confidence in yourself for the quarterback, Applewhite, to come back after those two turnovers and put that ball right on the money. Big play, Applewhite. Does it again. Now a scoring chance. Play fake. The Major's got a man. Texas. He goes to his tight end, Chris Smith. A penalty flag is being thrown in the end zone, perhaps because of the celebration. Back 
Brown is saying, I told Ben Crenshaw to get out of the end zone. <laughs> Let's go for the on duck. This the offense. 15-yard penalty try. So instead of a chip shot for Chris Stockton, it'll be backed up. And the major strikes as Cavill sets it up. And then Chris Smith, the tight end, breaks wide open in the flat for the touchdown. This will be a 35-yard extra point. This not a gimme, and it is for the lead. Off to the right. Got it. Boy, was that close. You know, in the NFL, it might not have been an extra point. The entire football has to be within the uprights, but not in the college game. These two receivers clear the right side. The tight end is going to come over underneath them. The play action fake goes away. The two receivers just clear it out. A little traffic problem for the defense. And a nice throw by Major over the linebacker and into the tight end Smith's hands. Nice and soft. Touchdown pass, and there you go, right there. That's that's what the flag's about, and that's what they're doing in college football. And there's the flag. Third touchdown pass of a tight end this year for the Horns. A very impressive drive. When you consider that he had thrown an interception on his first series, he had fumbled inside the 10-yard line on his second. Now, wait a minute now. You make it sound like it was his fault that he fumbled the ball. A little more weight training. He gets out of my friend Madden here from Chicago. I mean, the sheriff says these quarterbacks have got to play. Hold on to that ball. He was blindsided by that defensive end. Murphy, Chapman, and Morgan are back deep. Picked off at the 19 by Morgan. Just short of the 30-yard line, and a reminder, next Saturday we've got outstanding games coming your way. Battle of the Sunshine State. Mr. Warwick had himself someday in Jacksonville against Duke today. Or Michigan against Michigan State. The two unbeatens get together. So we've got two monsters in the early time period next week. Kansas State dashes out, trailing for the first time today, 7-6. to six. They spread the field. Backfield is empty for Helm. Pressure up the middle, fires high and incomplete. Overthrew George Williams. And both receivers were open. The Dell game solutions for Kansas State offensively. They just need to get some solid play from their quarterback and use the playmakers, and that's the wide receivers, Lockett and Morgan, and get the ball to Murphy, their speedster, out of the backfield. Attack the run, stop the run, and make the Kansas State quarterback throw to win the football. Make the Kansas State quarterbacks win it. On second down, Helm throwing here and way over Aaron Lockett's head. That'll bring up the third and ten. And that was not an impressive throw no. that time. And he had receivers open the last two times. Jonathan Beasley, who mentioned, started the first three games. Sat out last year. was a redshirt year. He is a fourth-year junior. It looks like he's gotten the word to go throw a few balls. And I think, I think what Snyder's going to do is he's going to use them both. He's going to try them both, and whoever's playing well, we know that uh, Helm was pretty excited last night at the hotel. Back with the shotgun, third down and 10. Crushed at the 20-yard line. Casey Hampton rolls through for the horns. Hampton just comes right up the center, 
and beats the center, number 64, Casey Hampton, leads the Longhorns in tackles from a defensive tackle position. Now, how tough is that? Like a fire plug, he's only 6'1 and 300 pounds. Mike Ronsick back to punt, standing on his own five-yard line. Hangs it high, Garcia back for the horns, fields it at the 29-yard line. And down in a hurry at the 32-yard line, and that's where Major Applewhite and Texas will have a first and 10 leading it for the first time, 7-6 after that last scoring drive. Tommy Cavill, who set up that touch, we asked him what is his favorite route, and here's what he had to say. Fake the post and go into the outside because just to see the, the look on the DB's face when you make that post move and going back outside is like he said, oh. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> you know, I messed up. And I'm that way. Just see you later after that. Here's the end of round with the young man, and the K State defense was ready. Ball is down. He did not fumble. Didn't surprise him when Cavill came around. Darren Howard and Lamar Chapman, two pretty good defenders, were right there. Well, Cavill, we was talking about going, having one-on-one, -on -one, first of all, looking in the uh, defensive back's eyes, look to the inside, and then break down the field to the outside. That's just a good execution, both by the receiver and the quarterback. Second down and 12. Here's the handoff to the fullback, Ricky Brown, and Brown again bolts free. K-State's defense is obviously stacked to take away Hodges Mitchell, and twice the Texas assistant coaches have hit his defense with the fullback. Good blocking on the outside, too, by uh, Ryan Nunez on the wide receiver allowed the running back to get about six or seven more yards. Third down and one. Nunez out wide, transferred back to his hometown from Colorado. Hodges pounces in, depending on where they spot the ball. He is being run off by Semino, number 42. Semino, number 42, off the south. Very, very close. Official timeout. So the officials will bring the chains out. I think both sides feel that he has made the first down here. The offense is ready to call another play. It is interesting when a team gets early opportunities, especially on the road. And Kansas State had two golden scoring opportunities, and they settled for field goals both times. Frequently, you see that backfire on teams, but they don't turn early chances into touchdowns. That's exactly right, Brett, but when you're breaking in a new quarterback, uh, you know, you've, you, you kind of got to walk before you can run. And I'm sure they just wanted to come out with some points on the board. First down and 10. Applewhite, deep drop. Got time underneath, dropped. It was going to be a difficult catch at the 45-yard line. Cavill couldn't hold on. And let's go to New York and John Saunders. John? Brent, want to know your decision on this one. LSU against Georgia's 23-22 after a touchdown. Josh Booty going for two to take the lead. Throws it towards the end zone. Will Witherspoon knocks it down. And Georgia wins this one by one. Could have taken the game to overtime. Brent? Uh, on the road, I say take it to overtime. They were between the hedges, no question about that, John. Kick that extra point and get into OT. Second down now and 10 for Texas. Quick pass by the Majors. Got Cavill on the slant. 
First down as he crosses midfield, wrapped up by Chris Johnson. Boy, he is a good-looking and dangerous wide receiver. Let me check what I did say. He's a little bit short of the first down now as I look down. He goes in motion across the formation, and then he's going to come back. He is not a small receiver. He is 6'2 and over 200 pounds. A lot of these receivers are small for the long run. Nunez is small. Jones is uh, small. Flowers is a speedster. But, uh, this is the one tall receiver that they have, and that kid is good. So actually, Texas facing just that much to make a first down behind Major Applewhite, the young man who is keeping the highly touted Chris Sims on the bench here in Austin, Texas. And Chris watching. Had a chance to speak with him a little bit earlier today. He's still very happy to be here, even though he's not playing. Well, it's not fair to compare him at this point. Chris is just finding his way around campus and getting his classes. He doesn't know this offense nearly as well as Major Applewhite does after he's been here two and a half years. Little change up at the line of scrimmage against this defense. Let's see what the Major comes up with on third and short. First down run. So Kwame Cavill moving up the charts. You can see he has passed the legendary Lamb Jones and setting the sail after his good friend and former teammate, McGarity. Who knows? He could pass him this afternoon if he catches a few more of those bombs, Bob. Yep, and he will because, and he probably will. He came in with 37 catches on the year in five games, and that lead easily leads the conference in receptions. Final minute here at the opening quarter. They show Buck and Luck, and Applewhite's got time against it. Got it complete. And that's a first down, the Longhorns, Ryan Nunez. Boy, did he squeeze that one in against tight pressure it, coverage. It, it was good coverage all the way around. Got a Kansas State player on the field. That's uh, Fadafehi. Mario Fadafehi is injured on the play. From behind the offense. Major's getting a little bit better protection than he did the first two uh, possessions of the ball game. A little square in by the wide receiver, Nunez, and he just takes it away from Carter. Bob, what a difference it makes to have a now veteran quarterback in Texas case against a team like Kansas State that has, you know, excellent defensive players, running backs, oh, yeah. skilled players, but the quarterback position favors Texas so much in this game. It's a good matchup because of the passing of Applewhite. So he's a young man that they did not expect to be this good, to be perfectly honest about it. And Jeff Kelly no longer at K-State. Warwick Dunn's high school down Louisiana way. What a career he had at Florida State. It's and now, good. of course, playing with Tampa Bay. It's pretty good. You got, you got uh, Warwick Dunn over there, and then you got uh, uh, come over here, and you got uh, Ricky Williams. It's always, it's always nice to have somebody to run the ball in your backfield. That's good news. Mario Fotofehi walks off the field. So here's first down for the major. Straight back. Got one on one, but overthrew Cavill that time. And Butler, the defender. Jeremy Trius Butler, the sophomore corner from down Dallas. There are a lot of Texas players on this Kansas State team. It's interesting, Kansas State has to go outside the state to recruit. Oh, what a wealth of talent down here. Look at Kansas State with 16 players. Well, there's enough players in this state to go around because 90% of the University of Texas gets their the players come from the units from the state. But Kansas State comes in and gets theirs too. Second down and 10. The draw with Brown. Slashes. Fumble. Texas recovered it. 
And it's a gain of nine yards. And the first quarter comes to an end. Corey Kwai pounces on the loose ball and saves the moment for the Horns, who lead it by one. Timeout. This is a real mom-and-pop hardware store. I think we have a nice family feel. A couple of months ago, we got a little bump in our car. Oh, well, we've been with our state farm agent for 26 years. Because I think he puts his personal self into it. Just like we do at the hardware store, he actually listens to what your needs are. It makes me feel pretty important. Get to know your state farm agent. You can't put a price on a good relationship. At BASF, we don't make the boat, we make it faster. We don't make the safety seat, we make it more comfortable. We don't make the studio, we make it quieter. We don't make the golf clubs, we make them more powerful. At BASF, we don't make a lot of the products you buy, we make a lot of the products you buy better. BASF. National Car Rental presents Drive for the National Championship. In 1981, the Clemson Tigers hosted the defending national champion Georgia Bulldogs, led by Heisman winner Herschel Walker. The Clemson defense forced nine Georgia turnovers en route to a 13-3 win and the national championship. This year's national champion will be crowned in the title game of the Bowl Championship Series. Hey there, time for a holiday. So switch off your computers and take a national holiday with National Car Rental. Spend some time with National Heroes. Or visit a national treasure. Join the National Football League. Or take your kids to a national park. But wherever you go, National will get you there fast. Because with hundreds of locations nationwide, it's hard to find a place that's not a national city. Whoa! National Car Rental, what are you waiting for? Let's go! Well, the story here is the two quarterbacks. Major Applewhite already 6 of 10 with a touchdown pass. He's thrown for 82 yards. K-State has not shown us any kind of a passing game yet. Adam Helm, one of four. They trail it, though, only by one point. Two field goals after two turnovers. Here's third down and two now for Texas as we start the second quarter. Brown, the fullback, steps in motion. An H-back look. Great penetration with the major slips away. Busted trying to get the first down by Lamar Chapman, the hard-hitting safety. Applewhite is not the quickest of foot. Seminole 42 times is exactly the way you want to do it. The offense should control the line of scrimmage with the cadence, and here Applewhite gets away from him, avoids the big loss, is not going to pick up the first down, but he got he, he would have lost three or four yards if, uh, if Seminole would have got a hold of him. So they're going to attempt a long field goal here with Chris Stockton. The wind is at his back, and I'm sure that that is playing into Mac Brown's decision here with the punter, Ryan Long, is the holder. It'll be a 44-yard attempt if they kick it. He tried to draw somebody also into that neutral zone. A play, prior to play. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still fourth down. Now they might even think about a pooch punt. I would say that the K-State defenders should be prepared for maybe a direct snap and a punt. And this is what, 47 yards, well, now. 49 yards. But again, the breeze is at his back. But in a battlefield position, you might want to punt it here. They do not. Now it rolls dead in the end zone, breaks the plane. So now it comes back out to the spot. What do you think of that decision, Bob, by the uh, Texas coaching staff? I think it was fine. You're down when uh, you're going to kick the ball. Uh, you, uh, your uh, defense is playing well. You're against the Kansas State team that has had the ball three times. Two, two with wonderful field position, and they haven't done anything with it. All right, Jack Aroo. Well, great. Remember last week, the second half was the key for Kansas State. Well, when they asked Coach Bill Snyder about that and whether they thought the players could rebound, he said, hey, if none of them don't believe in that, I won't even put them on the bus to Texas. Helm's still in. Now on the toss play to David Allen. 
And it is Jam trying to turn the corner on the left side. Lee Jackson was one of the burnt orange jerseys there. Just an amazing turnover. And when you consider all of the schools that have turned their programs around, let's take Northwestern, for example, which came from nowhere, as K-State did. They were not able to sustain it. Snyder is, and one of the ways he does it is to recruit heavily from the JUCO ranks. He brings in a lot of talent, and it has paid off. For example, Murphy is going to earn his college degree this year. Second down and 11. And a whistle prior to the snap. Bob, your feeling now about sticking with Adam Helm and not turning this offensive Snyder's over to Jonathan Beasley, because I think you have of the opinion that Beasley might even start this game. Well, I think he's going to give him one more series right here. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five yard field. Let's take it down. I mean, he's only had, they've had three possessions. They've had two, two with great field positions inside the, on, one on the 23 and one on the nine yard line of Texas. So they've had great field positions. The other started from the minus 30. They haven't done very much with the ball yet. I think he's going to give Helm a little bit more and then, and then slide uh, Jonathan Beasley in. Second down and 16. Obviously, Texas doesn't think Helm could move the ball on him. They come with the blitz this time, and Helm is sacked at the 17-yard line. The Andre Lewis, the middle linebacker, storms in. Look, Carl Reese, Carl Reese likes to blitz his linebackers. Number four, right up the middle, stays with it. Everybody comes off of him. You know. An experienced quarterback would either have ejected and got outside the pocket to his right if he's a right-handed quarterback, or throw the ball and get rid of it. But Adam making his first start, you know, these things don't just come naturally to him. Facing a third and 25. Now he sprints right, looks downfield, incomplete and out of bounds. So Kansas State is forced to punt. I like the call, though. You've got a first-time starter. Get him outside the pocket. Run a deep out. Maybe you'll get defensive holding and pick up a first down that way. So Ronsick back to punt. And Garcia. Turn another one. Look at his eyes as he looks at the field. That's a great, great view of the young man getting ready to return a punt. Off to the right, off to the left. Where are they coming from? Where am I going to get he's help? Checking, he's checking the flyers on either side and how they're getting blocked. Penalty flag, and it's blocked, partially blocked, but there was a penalty flag on the snap. The linesman threw it, so let's let this officiating crew sort this out right now. Jeremy Jones blocked the punt. The blocked punt. That's one of the major stories here in Austin because Texas would be unbeaten except for that. They were offside, so obviously that's one of the reasons why they blocked that particular punt. But we go back to their opening game against North Carolina State, which State blocked three punts, one for the win in the last three minutes. That three minutes prior to the field goal today is the only time that uh, Texas had been behind coming into this game. Upside, on the defense, five yard penalty, still fourth down. Just lined up offside. Behind the punter. The block that came from the right side. They try to adjust off the side of the foot, but still all in all, a very good punt. And it'll roll out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. So we'll take a timeout with 12.40 to go in the first half. Texas leads Kansas State 7-6. This better be good, Captain. Let us feel in California taken yesterday afternoon and this morning. So? Florida, tomato field taken yesterday today. Now we're tracking a bacon train. Sir, this is live. Chicken truck convoy. What does it all mean? Next week, Burger King solves this mystery in a big way. Burger King, have it your way. 
Chevy trucks are the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. And now, during Chevy Truck Month, check out the powerful Silverado, the rugged S10, the driving security of Blazer, the legendary Suburban, and the agile, durable Chevy Tracker. During Chevy Truck Month, you'll find the biggest selection of the year on the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road, Chevy trucks. You're born, you die. In between, you work on cars. We should all be so lucky. Who can solve this? Mr. Montez. Last Saturday in the Army Reserve, I linked up 40 tanks, 60 Humvees, and 7,000 troops. On Monday, class was no sweat. Not bad, Mr. Montez. As little as one weekend a month, two weeks a year. Army Reserve. One moment can make the difference between going home and going home a champion. Michelle Kwan, Maria Butierskaya, The Rematch, next Sunday on ABC. On a warm Saturday afternoon in Austin, Texas, with Bob Reese and Jack Aroot, I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you along with us this afternoon. Big 12 matchup with Goodwin. Texas trailing by two field goals, rallied to score the game's only touchdown is tight end Chris Smith. Work from the left side of the formation to the right, and the Horns lead it 7 6 on Stockton's extra point. And now they come back out with a first and 10. Hodges Mitchell, the young man who had to replace the legend, number three, is on it running back along with Ricky Brown, the fullback. Ricky Williams, of course, running for the New Orleans Saints, who are in Chicago for a game tomorrow. Cavill's the motion man. They show blitz, Kansas State does. It's picked up, but not in time. And it is incomplete. Second down and 10 as Ben Lieber came rolling in for the Wildcats. Major was trusting his offensive line and backs to pick up that blitz. He knew he had it blocked. And if he could just have the time to throw, he had something downfield. But uh, you know, just because you've got a hat on every defensive guy does not mean that they're going to win that battle. He got hit just as he was throwing. Hey, good point, Bob, because the speed and the ability, the strength that K-State rolled off that block, and uh, he was able to get in. Second down and 10. Now they send Mitchell out as a wide receiver. Basically an empty look, and in trouble again is Major. Cannot leave him alone against Mark Semino, who saw that he was naked in that backfield, and Mark rolled in for the sack. So Mark Semino, he's been a ringleader for three years up in Manhattan, Kansas. 240-pound senior now and a three-time captain. Brother Jeff also played for the Cats back in 92, and he is a good one. He's led this team in tackles the last three years. Third down and 20 facing Applewhite and the Horns. They run the draw play in K-State. You can hear somebody yell, draw, draw, and Robinson jumped it right now. Nothing doing for Hodges Mitchell. So Texas is three and out. Well, it's the K-State defense that's really setting the tone here. Now comes one of the key moments in this game because here is the young man who almost single-handedly beat Texas last year. Number 32, David Allen. 172 yards in punt returns. Texas now inside the 25-yard line. What will they elect to do here with Ryan Long? Long off to his left. There is a penalty flag down on the play. The punt will be marked at the 32-yard line. Running into the kicker. But running into the kicker is called against K-State. Now, if it's not roughing, if it's just running into, Texas will have to just punt it again. But if it is the roughing version... The and, punter's uh, hurt, too, I think. Not sure that's the no, punter. No, that's not the punter. That's Brown, Brown, the Brown. That'll be the uh, that's the free safety. That'll be the third free safety that has uh, been injured this year. The other two have had surgery. Mm -hmm. 
There's a look at the uh, punter. He gets it away. Then somebody rolls into him. Right there, yeah. He tried to punt it, tried to block it, and then just ran into the bottom leg, the support leg of the punter. Drew Thalman ran into his leg. And uh, it looks like to me like they're going to decline it and yeah. take the football. That's exactly what has happened. Bill Snyder said, no, they just have to punt it again five yards back. We want the football. We're down a point. We've got 11 minutes to go here in the first half and give us the ball. Now, wait a minute. If you got a, if you got a great punt returner back there, and that was a pretty good kick. He kicked it out of bounds, and he kicked it a long way. Uh, you know, I, I think I would I'd want to take a shot at my punt returner trying to run another one back. Jonathan Beasley checks in for the first time today as the quarterback. Here is the toss play, and this is the reason a penalty flag comes flying. They wanted David Allen to be the running back. So Coach Snyder did not want him beaten up as a punt return man, and now we know the reason why he didn't take the penalty. And the flag this time goes against K-State. So rather interesting decision by Snyder on the far sideline here in Austin. Looks a little bit frustrated, but not as frustrated as he was at the end of the first half in Ames, Iowa yesterday. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. You know, we, we sit up here, we do this a few days a week. And those coaches down there, they with these kids all summer long, all three years, four years, they know they know their team a little bit better than we do. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll defer to Bill on that one. He must have had a good reason for not having them put together. Well, we told you that Ben Crenshaw is here today, and uh, we've got a little piece of business coming up shortly for our Ryder Cup captain and former great Texas University golfer. Here comes Beasley, wants to set the screen against this furious rush. Morgan can't get a handle on it. So now for our Aflac trivia question, let's turn it over to Ben Crenshaw. Hi, I'm Ben Crenshaw, captain of the 1999 Ryder Cup team. As you know, I know a little bit about comebacks. Do you know the best comeback in Texas football history? We'll have that answer from General Ben a little bit later. Right. I guess he does one? know something about comebacks. Uh, that was pretty good. Right? Uh, that's, you know, I think it's one of those things where you always remember where you were when you saw the comeback for the Ryder Cup this year. I was between St. Louis Ram touchdowns on my clicker. <laughs> down at 23. Nothing doing on that snap. Casey Hampton simply was not fooled. Greg snapped to Lazatic, and uh, there was nothing doing on that one. The defensive line for the Longhorns is really dominant. Hampton and Rogers, Humphrey and, uh, and Woodward, really a dominant crew. Third down and 26. Fortunately for the Horns, Greg Brown, who was shaken up on that punt, was able to return to the lineup. He is on the field. Beasley rolls hard, in trouble. Deep, got a man! Almost intercepted, and that was Lee Jackson, the safety over there. He had a man, Brent, but he had to throw it too soon. There was pressure on him in the defense and the offensive backfield. Pressure coming from the left side. If he had more time to throw, he could have waited a little longer. He just threw too high. He needed to drill that ball, throw it a little flatter and a little quicker. And Texas with the safety coming up over the top to help out on that play. Wants it back to punt for K-State. Texas leads it by a point inside of 10 minutes. Right behind Ronson. Fair catch the signal. And the Horns will have it at the 48-yard line. They'll play with almost half a field for Major Applewhite when we come back. Timeout. Why do I have Aflac insurance on top of my regular health insurance? Because he has his mother's eyes. Because I still have to teach him to whistle. And because Aflac helps cover what other insurance doesn't. If I'm injured, Aflac even provides cash to help pay bills. So why do I have Aflac? Did I mention he has his mother's eyes? Aflac Supplemental Insurance. 
Without it, no insurance is complete. Meet Carlos Sandoval, veteran Navy SEAL, trained to go through anything, equipped to survive it. Introducing the Chevy S10 Survival Pack. CD, automatic, air, aluminum wheels. Over $1,500 in savings and $1,250 cash back. You might think that could weaken a Navy SEAL. Fat chance. The Chevy S10 Survival Pack. Like a rock. There's this place in the neighborhood where they have these outrageous, you pick two platters, and basically you pick two out of three entrees. It's two on one plate, be it the Cajun steak with all those sizzling spices, or a pile of succulent roasted garlic shrimp, or barbecue chicken with that sauce that sticks to your lips and your mind like some really interesting dream. It was too good to end, but it will, just like the you pick two platters. Two entrees, one plate, only at Applebee's. You know, Bob, I think every now and then I go brain dead. Obviously, in talking about that penalty on the punt, penalty was against Kansas State. Texas declined it. They didn't want to punt the ball. It's to Allen one more time. That's what I was thinking. There was only one penalty on the ball, and it was against... Uh, kind of a fall to me. It's a little hot up here. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Horns. White on first down, got a man, got him, breaks free, Jeremy Jones, down at the one-yard line, the ball is down, first and goal on a 51-yard pass play as the Major hits his second bomb of the afternoon. Both of the wide receivers over here, but gets both of the corners here. Nunez is in the backfield. They're going to swing him down the sideline. There's no corners on that side now. The tight end releases inside. He swings down the field. That's Jones, number 19, who was lined up in the backfield, but he's a wide receiver. Right behind the H back for the touchdown, Texas. Chris Robertson. Stockton nails another extra point on the board. So after giving up two field goals, the Longhorns rally behind sophomore quarterback Major Applewhite, and they lead it 14 to 6. Power football this time. Robertson dives to the end zone. Timeout. With us? I can do it. 20 years. I don't know. I mean, you just caught an edge. It happens. I sit and I wonder sometimes. Year after year, it's good to have someone you can depend on. Chevy. The most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Yeah, folks, there's some turbulence reported ahead. We're going to climb a 30,000 feet. that won't fill you up and never let you down. Uh-oh. Make it a Bud Light. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you to return to your seat. We haven't cured cancer. We don't know how to close the hole in the ozone layer. We can't control the weather or the crops or hunger. We can't keep the sun from burning out one day. And we can't stop war. Yet, we're Texas. 
promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of the Bowl Championship Series on ABC. Let's go! Nine minutes and 11 seconds left here in the first half, and the Texas Longhorns lead it 14-6. Sellout crowd here in Austin on a warm Saturday afternoon. And the Texas defense doing its job along with Major Apple White's offense. K-State elects to bring it on out. Murphy. Well, now for our Aflac trivia answer, let's go back again to Ben Crenshaw. The question was, what was the best comeback in Longhorn football history? It happened in 1969 when Texas beat Arkansas 15 to 14 in the last quarter to win the national championship. Go Longhorn. <laughs> and Captain Crenshaw of our Ryder Cup team joining us upstairs here to watch his beloved horns. He doesn't miss a game. Beasley's still the quarterback. There was movement in the line, and now the flag comes flying. And uh, I tell you, as, as Bob Greasy said, Everyone will remember where they were. Like I said, I was between touchdowns, but when I came back and another horn, Justin Leonard ran in at 45 footer. Gentle <laughs> 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 Ben. Uh... <laughs> nice to see you, Coach Crenshaw, my friend. I'm so happy for you and everybody on that team. It's great to see both you gentlemen again. Uh, that was a thrill of a lifetime to watch those guys play together like that. God, they played well. They played their hearts out. Stick right with us here, Ben, and we will. Uh, we've got some questions here between plays. First down and five after the penalty against the Horns. Beasley snaps it off, incomplete. You know, Ben, I, I thought Bob Greasy had really a, an excellent question. We were talking yesterday. How do you think this Ryder Cup will be remembered by everybody? Well, it was a it was a great comeback, no question. We had we were way down. We had to do what we did very early that day. We had to come out convincingly. Uh, our guys had to play solidly, and our team members needed to see our, uh, the board red with American flags. Uh, and that's how they got back into it. Here's second down now and five. Dropped incomplete, and it will be third and five. Ben, do, ben do, let me ask you a question. Every time, and I've seen you a lot, and every time I see you, you're carrying this little trophy with you. <laughs> Does this ever leave your arm? And shouldn't that, doesn't that belong to the PGA of America or something? Uh, they have the original, Bob, and it was locked up in the case yesterday. <laughs> this is my replica that my guys oh, gave me. Oh, isn't that great? And this memory will never leave my heart, I can tell you. I wouldn't even. Here's the third down play for Kansas State. They've converted only one of six against that tough horn defense today. There was movement down in the line. You know, Ben, what I would suggest with the Ryder Cup is do what to do with the Stanley Cup. Everybody gets to keep it, you know, for about a week. You yeah. take it to your favorite saloon. You can take it out with your wife and family, whatever you want to do. This will be uh, well tracked over Austin the next few days, I can tell you. But here, let's check now on, uh, on fourth down. The stars and stripes were flying Brookline last Sunday afternoon for the United States. And uh, what a moment that was. Now they juggle some blocking assignments to try and prevent the horns who came back in their second game and blocked the few just like North Carolina State did against them. Garcia's back deep. Garcia slides a block and is, is out of bounds. Then one thing, uh, one comment, I know you said, but I'm finished as a coach, as a captain. I'm not, and I said, wait a minute, we had great success as an American. I want Crenshaw to run this team all the time. Don't, don't you feel you'd like to go back down to you? Oh, Brent, that took two years of my life, I'll tell you. And, uh, my, yeah, Julie and I want to get back to our kids. And she did the greatest job in my life. Oh, never know. She was the den mother for two years, and she did a great job. What was it like being in an individual sport all these years and then having to pull a bunch of individuals together 
as a team that you as a coach get him to pull together. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Everybody depending on each other and wanting to play hard for each other. It wasn't that difficult. We were pretty galvanized coming in. And uh, gosh, they played their hearts out for each other. I want to ask you a football question here in a minute. He's made your hands it off now. Big hole. And not just Mitchell pounds it through. Ben, tell me about Mac Brown and how they have turned the program around here in Austin. Your feeling now about this Texas football program? Let me tell you, Coach Brown has done more things than I've ever seen any coach do. Of course, you know when when you got uh, we got Daryl Royal uh, uh, back in, and they are absolutely together. They are abs they're pushing every button right. I mean, from alumni, whatever you think, they, he constantly thinks about things for the program. He's great. Here comes Hodges. He's thinking daylight right now. Number three picks up another five yards. You know, I go back to, to Ricky Williams' decision to stay here and the great year he had, and off of that, the recruiting. I think that Ricky really helped the football program here, too. Oh, oh unbelievable. That was, that was a decision that everybody respected so much. You know, he could have done anything he wanted to. He stayed right here. It's a, it's a great big family here. You never miss a game, do you, partner? No, I try not to. Did you call Coach Royal player. and ask him a few tips about teamwork and getting these guys together? Well, I'll tell you what I did. I called Coach after this, and I said, Coach, now I know a fraction of what it is <laughs> to, do, to, to succeed in a team game. <laughs> Number three, Hodges well, you know, Mitchell. You mentioned here. Ricky Williams and Hodges Mitchell, and here, Ben, is what he had to say when we asked him, what's it like replacing Ricky Williams? Give a listen. It's a lot of pressure for trying to replace the greatest running back in college football history. I mean, the spirit of Ricky Williams will always be here, and I'll never be able to make the fans forget about Ricky Williams. But I can go out there and try to make them think about me a little bit. Indeed, they are That's thinking right. about him too, Bob Greasy. Yes, they are. You can't replace a legend. You have to do it your own way. They're down at four now. Applewhite's back in that shotgun look. They show blitz, and here they come. They've got an alley, and the major gets it off in time. Intercepted as a result of the blitz. Jeremitrius Butler picks it off and is out of bounds. Poor decision by Major. Uh, an unblocked safety. Chapman, I believe it is, coming up without anybody on him. To the left of your screen, that's, no, that's Cooper, number 40. And he throws it. He should just throw it away. And I think he might have been trying to throw it away, but he should have thrown it out of bounds. Sometimes quarterbacks try to do too much. Should just throw the ball away. You know, Ben, the night before the final day, I hear it was low. Well, let's have this one play, and then we'll uh, ask you about this. First down and 10. Murphy battles, makes the most Number out of that three, run. Frank Murphy. Somebody had said, on, it might have been Johnny Miller, actually, that uh, you had told him it was a very emotional get-together. Tell us about it with, with the members of the team and yourself privately the night before. I, I've never seen such an outpouring of emotion uh, for each other. Uh, you, you can't believe some of the things that were said in there. They were intensely personal, uh, but everybody, as I said, was together before that. But the whole week was a culmination of, of everybody sharing this nucleus and this big ball that was going to go downhill, and there, nobody could stop it. Oh, it was just wonderful, Ben. Second down and seven. Murphy eating up. We want to thank you very Let much. Let me ask Jeff one Bob. more question, Ben. You said it was it was key the next day to have the early guys do well to build this thing going. Did you choose your players to play early in the morning, the first, second, and third? How did you choose them, and, and what was your thinking behind that? Well, to Tom Lehman uh, was a solid rock, uh, along with Hal Sutton. Uh, those two led it off, and they. I knew there were, I knew that Mark James was going to put those, their two stronger players yeah. there too. Yeah. If they could handle them, it started that chain reaction. So those two guys got it started. So on third down, Beasley sticks it in for a first down. Morgan makes the reception again. Ben, thank you very much for dropping by. Say hello to the family. Always great to see you. Brent, great to see you. Too. Good job. Now you might want to reconsider. To Come you. back as captain. <laughs> <laughs> no, ben, sir. it was great. Thank you. Congratulations. I'm so happy yeah. for your son. They wouldn't have done it without you, Ray. Thank right. you. Say hello to your family. I will. Okay. So Bill Snyder on the far sideline, now playing with half a football field and a first down. K-State trailing it, 14-6. Beasley. And he goes right back to that sideline pass. Morgan, two catches in a row. His ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable.
of the longest lasting trucks on the road. Applebee's, you belong at Applebee's. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. And Bud Light, for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. What you're seeing here now, Brent, is what we said in the game solutions, the Dell game solutions. Somebody for Kansas State in the quarterback position has got to step up, and they've gotten some production now. He's completed his last two passes, moved him down to the field a little bit. Yeah, the junior, Jonathan Beasley out of Glendale, Arizona, and uh, they'll call a timeout. Time was running down, I think, when he looked up at the play clock. So he went ahead and called the timeout, and that exhausts their timeouts here in the first half with 4.26 to go, so we've got a chance. Let's check in. We told you about the early game. Oklahoma, Texas, you folks at this area, and I have to tell you about that one. Coming to you from Big D. Also, Purdue, Ohio State, North Carolina, Georgia Tech, USC, Arizona, or Oregon, UCLA. There'll be a late pick. And uh, Bebo says, come on down there to Dallas. Watch what we're going to do to those Sooners. How about Oklahoma, huh? Yeah. Can you believe Oklahoma leading the nation in passing? No. <laughs> I think the weather has to have been very good up in Oklahoma this time. That's oh. what I think. And Stoops is doing a great job up there. Well, he was uh, learning at the... Uh, at the knee of a pretty good pass master in Steve Spurrier when he was the defensive coordinator in Gainesville. And then he took the head coaching job and uh, he took his brother from Snyder's staff and he's the defensive coordinator with him at Oklahoma. Let's check in now with Jack Roof. Well, Brent, you've heard the cliche about a playbook being thicker than a phone book. But what I did is I asked Coach Ron Hudson, how thick is the playbook for Kansas State? He gave me one of these. Then we went over to Manhattan, Kansas, and we got the phone book. It's this. You do the math. <laughs> no wonder they're having trouble with the quarterback. He can't remember all the plays, Jack. And uh, we do get an update in the third quarter. Oklahoma 23, Notre Dame 14. Oh, boy. And on second down, Beasley runs for it. Finds daylight. Dives to the 32-yard line. First down for K-State and Beasley with the most impressive K-State drive of the game. He's putting a little life back into the uh, the offense. The offense for the first four series didn't do a thing, even though they had two field goals. Quarterback draw. So Lazatichia, number 37, looking for somebody to block. Start of the game, now watching from the sideline, unable to convert two great scoring chances into touchdowns. That's the difference in your football game. First down and 10. Here's Beasley. He gets time for the shotgun locket. Drilled at the 29-yard line. Let's take a closer look here at Jonathan Beasley, the 6'1", 215-pound junior quarterback. One of the captains this year, majoring in marketing, and a great chance here to take charge of this Wildcat offense, perhaps for the rest of the season. Second down and four. Tyrone Jones in at that one linebacking spot for the Horns. They show blitz. Beasley fires and a nifty catch inside the 20-yard line by Quincy Morgan. Now, he once was a teammate of Michael Bishop's. Michael, of course, the longtime quarterback at K-State. They played together at the Blinn, Texas Junior College program. I believe they won a national championship when they were teammates that year, too. Now, you can just imagine what kind of a combination that was. Concentrates on offense. He now has a chance in the red zone again. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. They spread the field. No backs in the backfield. They blitz it, and he hits a quick slant to the 12-yard line. With time running out, he puts the ball in Frank Murphy's hands. Jack Aroo. Well, Ray, you were mentioning Michael Bishop. I asked Ron Hudson, the offensive coordinator for K-State, what's the difference between Beasley and Bishop? He said, well, last year, when Bishop would come off the field, I'd have to talk to him, get him calmed down, because he was such an emotional character. He characterized Beasley as icy cool. Yeah, well, Michael Bishop had a lot more experience, too, and uh, Beasley, he's a young man, still learn. They're going to come empty. Let's see if Texas comes after him again on second down. They're coming. Backside picked up. Beasley steps away from it. Now his athletic ability. Great block. Fire. Incomplete in the 
the corner. There was some great play on both teams that side. Beasley Hill receiving a great, a great block. Hill does a great job, too, by staying with his man because anytime your quarterback is outside the pocket, he has all kinds of time. Hill, number one. Oh, he's going back the other way. I better get back on him. The ball's coming, and he just gets back and could have picked it off, but he just, just knocks it down did a good job. Here's your third down now. Wasn't that a great play, though, Bob, over there by that corner to turn around and go back after him? See anytime, a lot of those youngsters any, come right off it. Anytime your quarterback scrambles, it, uh, it's tough on your DBs. Empty quarterback draw. Beasley's three scrambles. First down, Kansas State. <laughs> So a lot of things going on. We mentioned the uh, Notre Dame score trailing Oklahoma. And of course, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime 99, Terry Bowden. And John will have all the scores and highlights from those games around the country. We'll find out how Peter Warwick did. There was a big ovation here when they announced that Ron Bain was being shut down again today by the Ohio State defense. They, of course, are trying to protect Ricky Williams' rushing record. First down and goal for Kansas State. Nick Warren, the H-back. They'll run the toss to Murphy behind him. And a tremendous defensive play on the corner by Lee Jackson, who would not be blocked. And number 23 made a whale of a play defensively. Brent, let's go back to the previous play. The third down play. Beasley, watch him. He's, he's going to run into his guard. It's a quarterback sneak, and the quarterback draw, but he doesn't allow the guard, Moses, number 66, to clear first. He got a little excited. He saw that hole there, and he said, let me go. And he ran into his 300-pound left guard. He says, I'll help you. Now right, second down because of that play by Lee Jackson. And there's the penalty flag. Penalty flag thrown by the linesman. I don't know how many fellows were moving down there in that formation, huh? Well, Bill Snyder would like to get six points, so right, seven right. points on the board here. Ball start on the offense, five yard penalty, still second down. That'll cost him five, bring it back to the 15. Costly, a penalty in the red zone is just uh, so tough on an offense, especially one like this. Texas, Look at that. Texas defensively is doing exactly what they wanted to, is shut down the Cats' run and force the quarterbacks to throw. And that's the guy they need to shut down right there. And they have. <laughs> shut him down so well that uh, his new hairdo look and all goes to the sideline. Second down from the 15-yard line. It's a second down and goal. Beasley, short drop, fires deflected, incomplete. They get one more shot at that end zone, and then they will have to settle for a field goal attempt. Lockett Lurk turned around and says, get it down, get it down. I said, he said, I had it, I just could have, just get it down a little bit. Beasley came into the game completing only 43% of his passes. And so far today, he's 5 of 11 for 41 yards. Wesley split to the left. Beasley fires Morgan incomplete. Field goal time for Kansas State. Three golden opportunities for touchdowns and a frustrated head coach. So Reem, having converted his first two. So a 32-yard attempt. Slides it right inside the left upright. 14-9, Texas leaves it, and we'll take a timeout.
on the wonderful world of Disney. Dave plays for goals. And Griff plays for souls. I'm here to offer you the Stanley Cup in exchange for your soul. Now, the power play between good and evil begins. Are you ready to take the plunge? It's a world television premiere. Boy Meets World's Matthew Lawrence and Will Friedel with Rhea Perlman in H.E. Double Hockey Sticks, Sunday at 7, 6 Central on ABC. Entertaining the world, one movie at a time. 19 seconds remaining in the second quarter with Bob Greasy and Jack Arute. I'm Brent Musburger. Texas leads Kansas State 14-9. K-State with three touchdown opportunities, settles for field goals on all three occasions, and that's why they're behind. Kickoff fielded by Jones. Tripped up and down at the 23-yard line. So Major Applewhite in Texas will put away the final seconds here of the first half and take that lead on into the locker room at intermission on a sold-out day in a large Royal Memorial Stadium here in Austin, Texas. Luxury boxes on the other side. That facility at the far end on your screen is as good a locker room, weight room, coaches' offices facilities as exists in the United States. This has become some facility here. Kneeling down. And the first half will come on to an end. So Mac Brown and the Longhorns take a 14-9 lead into the locker room. But folks, stay tuned. Texas has dominated opponents in the first half this season. But look at what Kansas State has done in the second half of their games. They have outscored everybody by a combined 61 nothing. They're behind because of this. A touchdown pass by the major Applewhite to a tight end. And then comes back with the long play to Jones, which sets up their second touchdown. Horns lead it. We're at halftime. Valvoline Halftime 99. Brought to you by Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline. From our New York studios, John Saunders and Terry Bout. 21-7 UCLA with the lead as Arizona State continues a very disappointing season right now. Now, highlights in the Big Ten, Wisconsin against Ohio State. Wisconsin trying to avoid losing for the third straight time. Michael Wiley stripped of the ball going in for the touchdown for Ohio State. So Wisconsin dodges a bullet there. But Wiley then 17 yards on the option to Steve Wisniewski. Gets it down to the one-yard line. Michael Wiley, he threw it down there, so give it to him. Let him take it in. Wisconsin again with a struggle here against Ohio State. And for Ron Dane, the struggle continues for the third straight game. I tell you, this team has had penalties, turnovers. You can't be a running team with that happening. And he's fumbled the ball himself, hurting his chances for a Heisman. All right, that's at halftime. Kansas State against Texas, and Texas is ready to dance. They're ready to play. They're ready to get going, and why not? Major Applewhite, their quarterback, since last year, he really has become a complete quarterback. I tell you, he does a great job. You know, he had his first start against Kansas State last year. They took him back behind the, the woodshed. But, you know, it's what's wrong right now at Kansas State. They have a veteran team, but, again, they don't have Michael Bishop at quarterback. Chris Smith with that reception there as Kansas State trails Texas at halftime. 14-9 is the score. Oklahoma against the Fighting Irish. Josh Heupel with two touchdown passes breaks the school record for touchdown passes in a season already. And this one's hardly going. Three and oh, they are right now. Alabama against Florida. This is not a typo. It's in the swamp, and Alabama has the lead 13-7. Sean Alexander, 15 touches for 82 yards there. Arkansas suddenly is a hiccup right now in the SEC. Well, Clint Sterner did not have a good first half, and they took him out of that football game, and they're having a lot of troubles. But again, Kentucky is the one doing the job. It's that passing game. You know, if you go into a program with a new program, that passing game can get you good again real quick. All right, Mississippi State and Vanderbilt. Wade Madkins with two touchdown passes. Mississippi State blows out Vandy and says, welcome to reality. Marshall against Miami in the MAC. And Chad Pennington with three touchdown passes, 32 to nothing. This one might have been their toughest test of the season in the MAC, and they are rolling. Tulane in Syracuse. Troy Nunes with a touchdown pass as Syracuse wins it easily, 47 to 17 in the final there. 
and Mount Unum with a 45 game winning streak on the line the nation's longest and in overtime 44 to 41 we of course will keep you up to date on that one stick around back with more scores and highlights on ABC's college football in a moment. This is Valvoline Halftime 99. John Saunders and Terry Bowden, your second half still to come. But first, some great news in the Big Ten. They had a handful of teams unbeaten, including Purdue, looking to win their 11th in a row. But facing Michigan, Tom Brady had a terrific game. 17 yards here to Marcus Knight. It was 14-3. Drew Brees, we watched him do this last week. He tosses the ball on the money every time. I think he's got quick feet. He had another great game, but this team may not be strong enough to keep him in the Heisman hunt. And Vinny Sutherland on that touchdown. Anthony Thomas. Look at the workhorse here. Drags about four Boilermakers towards the end zone. Drew Brees here trying to pull his team closer. Tosses it across the middle, and Larry Foote steps in front of it. The interception as Michigan remains unbeaten and knocks the Boilermakers down. They cannot win their 11th in a row, 38-12. Brady, 250 yards and two touchdowns. Drew Brees, the numbers aren't that bad, but that really doesn't tell the entire story. 293 yards there. What Michigan has done, their defense, to the Heisman hopefuls over the last couple of weeks. Ron Dane had zero yards in the second half against Michigan last week. Drew Brees was sacked twice today. He'd been sacked once the rest of the entire season. Now, you talk about the great defense of Michigan, but their offense today is what really made the difference. You're right, John. If there's one thing that people in Ann Arbor, Michigan, have been disappointed about, it's the productivity of Michigan's offense. They have not been able to score touchdowns uh, in the red zone. Take a look at this here. They're inside the 20-yard line here in the red zone. And now you'll see Tom Brady make a great uh, fake right to the tailback and bootleg out, throwing a beautiful touchdown pass to Marcus Knight for a touchdown. Did a great job. They had two touchdown passes in the red zone and three touchdown runs. Watch this here. He gets open. The defense has been fooled by the fake. And there's the touchdown. And you see this statistic. Look at this. All field goals in the first four games, but today, six of six in the red zone with touchdowns. Yeah, they really showed a dimensions today. They had not throughout the rest of this early season. Duke against Florida State. Would it be a tough game for Florida State? Well, they scored 62 against Duke last year. Peter Warwick trying to polish up the numbers here. Chris Wenke, little toss here to Warwick. Three yards out. Florida State's up seven to nothing. And Wenke calls his number once again, this time 39 yards to Peter Warwick. He takes off. Great move right there to the end zone. It was a 14 to nothing Florida State lead. And they'll let Peter Warwick throw the ball as well. Well, you know, he had no interceptions today. Oh, Peter Warwick, look at that throw. Outstanding. You know, he doesn't need to have a bunch of big plays, but two or three spectacular ones, it keeps him right there at the top of the list for that high. Lavernius Coles with the touchdown toss there. And Peter Warwick again, 12 touches, 107 yards, three touchdowns, and he also passed for a touchdown as well. When you look at this Florida State team and the numbers of Chris Wenke, is there any Achilles heel to this team? I think the only thing I see is Chris Winky throwing the ball up for grabs too much. They get ahead of everybody, and he throws the ball up. When you play Miami, when you play Florida, these athletes are going to intercept that football. All right, Nebraska back in action against Oklahoma State. Nebraska really got the running game going last week. They keep it going here. Quarterback Eric Crouch from three yards out, seven to nothing at that point. Then Eric Crouch goes to the air, 14 yards to Tracy Wistrom. And that's really the key for Nebraska now, mixing it up a little bit. I tell you, Nebraska's got their offense going, but I like the Nebraska defense. They're in the top six in every defensive category in America. Ralph Brown, their All-American quarterback, had nine tackles today. Oklahoma State hasn't beaten Nebraska since 1961. You see the numbers for Crouch. LSU against Georgia, and for Georgia, their assistant coach, Pat Watson, died of a heart attack after the game last week, so they wear the letters PW on their helmets in honor of him. Josh Booty here, 40 yards to Reggie Robinson. This gets it down to a one-point game, but then Jerry DiNardo decides he wants to go for the win and goes for two. I guess he didn't feel his team was strong enough or as strong as Georgia, because if, you, if you're an even team, you go for it. Uh, I'd have probably gone ahead and gone into overtime and given my kids a little better chance to win. Yeah, one last chance. It's tough to score from down there going for the two-point conversion. Georgia, for the second consecutive week, they win by a point. Central Florida last week, 23-22 the final there. Iowa and Michigan State, here's first. Here's a look at a quarterback comparison of Georgia and LSU. Josh Booty getting his first start today. Uh, he struggled at 18 of 45. Quincy Carter just enough to get it down. Now we move to Iowa and Michigan State. Nick Saban 
looking to go to 5-0. and oh, And Bill Burke, 32-yard pass to Plexico Burris with six receptions for 95 yards and three touchdowns. Michigan State now 5-0 and oh for the first time since 97, the second time since 1996. But the Big Ten schedule is always tough. Nick Saban preached to them all week. Don't think ahead to Michigan. Well, now they can start thinking about Michigan next week. Yeah, next week on ABC, some of you will see that. East Carolina against Army. East Carolina has been charmed this year. Steve Logan talking to his quarterback, David Garrard. And he gets it done again. 62 yards to Arnie Powell, opening up a 16 to nothing lead. East Carolina, when you look at their schedule, this is a team that could roll through their entire season and not have a chance to compete in the World Championship Series. 33 to 14 is the final. So I ask you the question, looking at their schedule, could they run the table? If they can beat Southern Miss next week, they can run it, but they're nothing more than Tulane. They're not going to make it to the BCS. All right, Tulane from this year, it could be East Carolina. Stick around, back with more in a moment. Next Saturday on ABC, we begin at noon Eastern, Miami against Florida State or Michigan and Michigan State. Then at 3.30 Eastern time, regional coverage, Purdue against Ohio State in the Big Ten, Oklahoma and Texas in the Big 12, North Carolina against Georgia Tech in the ACC, or one of two Pac-10 games. And then for our West Coast viewers only, at 4 p.m. Pacific, you'll see Cal against BYU. Find out which game you'll see in your area with our coverage map on Bowl Championship Series online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Central Michigan fullback Jason Meyer is this week's winner of the Burger King Scholar Athlete Award. Once again, Burger King Corporation will donate $1 million to the general scholarship funds of colleges and universities. At the end of the season, they will get a Scholar Athlete of the Year will be awarded $100,000 in his name. Four-year career, Jason has averaged 4.3 yards per carry. He maintains a 3.91 GPA and hopes to teach after college and is proud of this honor. I think a lot of student athletes are more known for their athletics and uh, there's a lot of kids out there who work hard both ways and they're not known, they don't get known as much for what they're doing in the classroom. Jason Meyer is this week's Burger King Scholar Athlete. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Super Stormwatch Doppler Radar, only on KAIT. Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Texas holds Kansas State to no yards rushing and leads it 14-9 at the half. With Don Parisi, I'm Brad Musburger. Welcome back, everybody. Major Applewhite, Bob. He was uh, efficient at times, but uh, he was not perfect in the first half for Mac Tom. Brown. He was not. Uh, I was impressed with Kansas State defensively. Three turnovers they got from Major. They knocked the, the ball loose from him one time. He first turnover he had he had an interception there's the fumble Kansas State has come up with three takeaways and that's the thing that's kept this Kansas State team in the ball game it's not their offense their offense has not done much they need to get some quarterback Beasley has done a nice job on the last drive of the ball game moving them down and getting some points on the board the other thing they need to do